Hi, uh, this is a video on how to make a bellows using a bladder from an inner tube. So uh, this diagram here shows the basic idea is what we're going to have is two plates, top plate and bottom plate. And on each plate we're going to make a, a valve. The valve sometimes is called a flapper valve, sometimes called a reed valve. Um, the, so we'll have two of them and what happens is the operation is, is that we'll have inlet air will come up through this valve and then outlet air will exit this way. So basically uh, as this bladder inflates in the sense that we're pulling down on this plate it's going to cause a suction. The suction is going to allow this valve to open and air to come in. The suction at the same time or the vacuum is going to cause this valve to pull down and close. Now when we push this plate up we're going to start compressing the air. When we compress the air the air is going to push down on this valve and, and seal it. Uh, because we have a pressure going on here it's going to open up this upper valve and we'll let the air out. So the basis is that uh, for this one I used a wheelbarrow inner tube. So uh, from a wheelbarrow I took the tire tube out, the inner tube, and what you do is you cut up the inside. So you make one slice around here. Uh, when you do this you'll end up with a bladder. right? So now you have a continuous strip of rubber. That, that you can now mount. Uh, this is uh, expandable. You, uh, um, you can use uh, vehicle tires, you know, 14 inch and 15 inch inner tubes and truck tires. Or the inner tubes is what we want actually. Uh, what I did is I found that for this wheelbarrow inner tube I needed about a 7 inch diameter uh, piece of wood to make a, a plate. So you can use wood or you can use uh, uh, plastic. I had plastic left over from when I made my front deck. Uh, coincidentally, this uh, dishwasher is detergent pail. The bottom of it was seven inch in diameter. So once I cut it out, um, it doesn't have to be 100% round, um, but it does have to be smooth. The sides have to be smooth. So I sanded them smooth with 120 grit. I drilled uh, initially a two inch hole in the center. Um, but two inches is too big. One inch works better. We'll see. Uh, I, I have a video of a two inch um, when I was testing it, how it worked. And I, and I also have a video where I changed the orifice size to one inch. It doesn't have to be in the center, right? Uh, this is all done by hand tools. And, uh, now for the uh, uh, reed valves, what I used is uh, for sealant, I, I had some pieces of cork, so I cut out some cork. This way you bigger than what you need. You can use cork, rubber, and, and the old days they used leather. Leather is quite common also. Uh, and then on top of that I just put a piece of plastic. I got it from a margarine container. I put it on just to give it some stiffness. Uh, then what you do is you staple or tack the cork to, the, uh, to your plate and this creates the flapper reed valve. Um, this is the jig I was putting, a sort of the frame uh, I put it on. I had some pieces of wood here. And what I did is I put a weight. I had a, a nut I glued it on on the top just to give it uh, some weight. I have run it without the weight. It seems to work perfectly fine. Uh, I left a little bit of space over here because I wanted to build a box around it. So I had to uh, cut it shorter. And that, that way I can put a box and I can put a hose fitting on it. Um, so this gives you an idea. I have the two plates. I have the top plate and the bottom plate. And here is the reed valve on, on the bottom. right? So air is going to come in here. Uh, so when these two plates move apart, this one is fixed. This one moves down. When this moves down, we get a, a vacuum in here, uh, which draws in air through this valve. The vacuum uh, draws this valve down and seals it. Now when this plate starts moving up we get a compression of air here so we have pressure. Uh, the pressure forces this valve shut and the pressure opens this one and then we get outlet air. Um, I needed some hose clamps to seal the bladder to the plates and um, naturally the hose clamps aren't long enough so you can 
couple two hose clamps together to make it uh, a nice long one. Uh, some of the things I found is that uh, you have to make sure the pitch of the threads here on the hose clamp matches on both of them. And also the other thing was the width, right? So before you, you put these on, put them together like this and uh, test. Uh, I put the bladder on the bottom plate uh, to start with and uh, this was just sort of resting on my uh, little workbench here and it was like wrestling an elephant. It was just horrible, I'll tell you. Uh, what I did find help is I put a staple uh, on one side and I started around and then I put uh, four staples, one on each corner, so to speak, and that you can staple or tack them in place. And then I put the hose clamp on. And that's all I didn't have to put. I thought I might have to use some sealant, like a silicone around or something like that, but I tightened those up and it sealed quite well. Um, in my case, I used a bucket here to hold the bottom uh, plate on in place, and it actually went it easier than when I was trying to do this one, uh, just holding it free. And that same story, I put a, a, ta uh, a staple here, a staple here, here, and one on the other side, and then um, it went in quite well, actually. Um, what I found is a two-inch orifice was too large so just to test it out what I did is I cut another piece of plastic out of a margarine container I put a one inch hole on it and then I uh, stapled my valve on top of it again I only did it on one side that. Uh, this shows the uh, valve when it's fully expanded it's not very pretty and that and what I found is that um, you got good vacuum pulling it all the way down but then when you pushed it up nothing really happened until it got to this point so as it pushed up what it did is it expanded into the tire shape right so it could just kind of fill this and then once this expanded then we started getting uh, air out 